Quiet on set, the dark side of kids' TV has been making the rounds on social media ever since it was first announced. It's an in-depth look at Dan Schneider's career as writer and showrunner on multiple kids' shows at Nickelodeon. He's not the sole purpose for the documentary, but his presence is felt all throughout as some truly horrible things happened under his supervision. He started making shows at Nickelodeon in the 90s, and they didn't get rid of him until after the Me Too movement. He led the network to great success, but did a lot of damage in the process, and this documentary lets those affected be heard. It's also a scathing critique of the entertainment industry at large, but we'll get back to that later. I think this is a must-see series for a lot of different reasons, specifically for anyone who grew up around the time these shows were popular. I must admit, however, that I never actively watched these shows growing up. I know I've seen some episodes of Drake and Josh, but that's about it. By the time iCarly had premiered, I was already a teenager, so I was a bit out of the age range for the type of humor these shows were going for. But even though I was not watching these shows, I was well aware of them because of how culturally relevant they were to young people at that time. The Nickelodeon shows got so popular that the Disney Channel started making their own live-action sitcoms, most notably Hannah Montana and Wizards of Waverly Place. I have a lot of friends who are just a couple of years younger than me, and they have very fond memories of all these shows. After watching this documentary, I'm pretty happy that I don't have that experience, at least regarding the Nickelodeon shows. There is a very dark shadow looming over these shows now, and it's probably been there for quite some time. I'm just being made aware of it through this documentary. There are two different sides of this story that I think are worth talking about. One is about a very toxic work environment, led by an abusive boss who treated a lot of his employees like garbage, most of these employees being literal children. The other is about the neglect these children suffered through, which led to a lot of them being vulnerable and abused by very bad people. Dan Schneider is not the only monster in this story. Multiple men have had criminal charges filed against them for what they did while working at Nickelodeon. I have to be careful around my wording here due to YouTube's guidelines, but I'm sure you understand what types of crimes I'm talking about. You of course get to hear the victim's stories, and they are properly backed up with receipts. I think the filmmakers made a smart decision here to focus on hard facts from police investigations, but also from internal investigations at Nickelodeon. There is a staggering amount of proof provided that shows what a horrible workplace Nickelodeon was for anyone who was not in power. And this goes back to the general toxic work environment that I was talking about earlier. The first two episodes show us how Dan Schneider laid the groundwork early on at Nickelodeon to never be questioned. He surrounded himself with other toxic, sometimes straight up evil people that would hurt these kids, and after they got caught, it was all swept under the rug. A dynamic like this in the workplace does not happen overnight, and this documentary shows us how that foundation was put into place from the very beginning. I personally feel like some of these people whose jobs it was to protect these kids should be punished for their negligence, but that'll probably never happen. It's tough to see the hardships a lot of people involved with these shows had to suffer through and feel like any form of justice has been served. Even if we take out the really bad criminal offenses from the equation, there's still a lot of trauma and heartache on display. The cast members, who are now all adults of course, they talk very openly about their mental health struggles that are a direct result from the trauma they suffered as children. It's tough to hear, but I think it's important as mental health is often stigmatized unless it's talked about in very vague terms. There's a candidness here about the uglier sides of mental health struggles like addiction and self-destruction that I think is important to listen to. I also want to note that one of the victims this documentary focuses on is Drake Bell, who is quite a controversial figure. He's mostly known for starring as Drake on the show Drake and Josh that I mentioned earlier, but he also has a whole section on his Wikipedia page titled Abuse Allegations. However, this does not diminish what he went through as a teenager. He had never shared his story publicly before, and it does bring a lot of weight to the documentary. Everything he says is also backed up by a police investigation and the fact that his abuser was tried and found guilty. And I guess that brings me back to all the evidence and receipts I was talking about earlier. A lot of it is footage that was shot for these shows or for bonus content that was posted online. You can brush off one or two of these clips, but the sheer amount of them paints a pretty damning picture of a toxic workplace that ran rampant with harassment. I am deliberately not showing you any of that stuff because it's very uncomfortable. No illegal activities are shown, of course, since a lot of this material actually aired on Nickelodeon, but I was completely unaware of the amount of sexual innuendo 
innuendos on these kids shows. Even calling some of these scenes innuendos feels quite generous as it's pretty clear that they knew what they were doing. I legitimately felt like I should not have been watching those clips. They made me deeply uncomfortable and sick to my stomach. And listen, times sure have changed a lot since the mid 2000s, but that should not be our main takeaway from this. Every documentary like this has a segment towards the end where they fast forward to 2017 at the start of the Me Too movement, and Quiet Onset does this too, um, but it's debatable if this is actually an empowering moment in the documentary. I'm sure it was for the victims at that time, you know, finally being able to speak out, but the reality is that Nickelodeon only thought firing Dan Schneider was the right thing to do after it was reported on in the media. That's terrifying, because none of this was new information to them. They very clearly did not want to fire him, but caved in because the pressure got too high and it could have jeopardized their business if they didn't sever their ties with him. If there's one thing that makes me really sad and cynical about the entertainment industry, it's how we constantly see that fans care more about the talent involved than the people in charge do. The heads of these studios and networks often just see their talent as dollar signs, and Quiet on Set shows us just how dark that can get. These children were never allowed to be children. Thank you guys for watching. I will have more videos coming soon. I just felt like I needed to talk about this for a bit. Take care of yourselves.